The THS hysteroscope is being used for diagnostic purposes and must not be confused with the Myasur scope. All references to hysteroscope in this video refer to the THS hysteroscope for diagnostic purposes only. Prior to performing any hysteroscopic procedure, the chart is reviewed to confirm the evaluation to date and to assess for any other medical reasons why an in-office hysteroscopy would be contraindicated in this setting. Once the chart is reviewed, the patient is counseled on the procedure, including its risks and its benefits. A consent form which outlines these risks and benefits may be signed at this time. The patient is then positioned on the examining room table. It is essential to confirm proper positioning so that the buttocks are slightly over the lip of the table. This allows for optimal range of motion with the hysteroscope during the procedure, such that the hysteroscope can access all parts of the uterine cavity and is not inhibited by the table. Additionally, any leaking of fluid from the vagina will travel into the buttocks bag rather than up the patient's back or on the table and be lost, which may interfere with the calculation of fluid deficit. An examination may be performed at this time to confirm the uterine position as well as the uterine size. A speculum is used to visualize the cervix, which is prepped with sterilizing fluid, such as betadine, or as preferred by the physician. In some patients, a local anesthesia consisting of a paracervical block may now be performed. The speculum is then removed and the setup should now be completed. This allows for any anesthetic agent to take effect during this time interval. For the setup, on one side of the patient is the monitor, the lighting equipment, and the fluid for the inflow. On the other side, immediate to the physician, is a table which is kept sterile for equipment. The hysteroscope is now assembled. The hysteroscope is inserted into the outer sheath and locked in position. The tubing for inflow is then hooked up to the outer sheath. The outflow tubing may be connected to direct suction or directly into the buttocks drape. Draping is now performed. At this point, fluid should be flushed through the hysteroscope into the buttock drape. A timeout procedure is performed, confirming that the patient understands the nature of the procedure and any other checklists are performed. A speculum is then reintroduced into the vaginal canal and the cervix is visualized. A single tooth tenaculum may be used to assist in straightening the uterus during the insertion of the hysteroscope. If this is the case, a local anesthetic may be applied at the anterior lip of the cervix to provide anesthesia. The camera head is placed onto the hysteroscope. The light source is then attached. At times, this may require an adapter. Once this is confirmed to be locked in place, the light is kept off until in use as heat from the light at the tip of the hysteroscope could cause a burn on either the patient or on the drapes where it is resting. A white balance is then performed by hitting the camera button while focusing on gauze or other all-white surface. This is done with the light fully illuminated from the light source. The purpose of this is to assure that there is proper resolution of color during the procedure. It is important to note in a 30-degree hysteroscope, the visual field is 30 degrees away from the line of the light source attaching to the hysteroscope. The camera head should always be pointing upwards. This allows for correct orientation throughout the procedure. The hysteroscope itself can be rotated, but another hand should always be on the camera head, holding it in an upright 12 o'clock position at all times. There is also a dial between the attachment to the hysteroscope and the camera head. This can be turned for focusing. Oftentimes, this is performed once the hysteroscope is in the uterine cavity, focusing on a blood vessel in close proximity to the edge of the hysteroscope. Recall, visualization of the cervical canal and internal os will be set 30 degrees off from the hysteroscope. You must be heading in a 30 degree angle as you advance the hysteroscope into the path you are visualizing. The hysteroscope is then placed through the external cervical os and into the endocervical canal. If this cannot be achieved comfortably, dilation may be necessary. Uterine sounding is not required unless the direction of the endocervical canal and the uterus cannot be assessed visually. Hydrodilation of the internal os can be performed once the scope enters into the endocervical canal. The inflow fluid should be hung at approximately two to three feet above the bed. 
25 millimeters mercury of pressure is associated with every foot above the bed. The optimal pressures for diagnostic hysteroscopy are typically in the 50 to 75 millimeter of mercury range. If the cervical internal os appears to be minimally dilated, the height of the fluid bag can be raised to 3 to 4 feet to give additional pressure to dilate the internal os. As the internal os dilates under increased fluid pressure, the hysteroscope can be gently advanced through the internal os into the uterine cavity. If hydrodilation is unsuccessful, dilation may be achieved with mechanical dilators. At this point, you are ready to begin your diagnostic evaluation of the uterine cavity.